Hello again, welcome back. You may have heard in previous videos about execution time or even in our pricing plans you can notice different number of hours allocated to each plan. But what is execution time? Execution time is the time it takes an action from a process to execute. The average execution time of a platform action is 0.08 to 0.1 seconds, meaning 80 to 100 milliseconds. Depending on the context, like using complex API calls or custom actions, the execution time of an action can take seconds or minutes, due to external factors that we will detail later in this video. Let's go to Processio for a more clear hands-on explanation. Our use case is to send email notifications to a list of approximately 1300 users, informing them about a new campaign. To create a process for this we need a get file data action to input the list of users and a for each action, as for each line in the list we need to perform the same actions. Within for each we will drag the following actions, a string trim action that will help remove all the spaces in the cell. A send email action that will send the email notifications. We will also add a count operation to help us for troubleshooting purposes if the process fails, which will simply tell us at what line it failed. And a map process data action, which will show us in every iteration of the for each the last email address used as a recipient. Again, super useful trick for troubleshooting. As you can see, we have on Canvas 9 actions. For the purpose of this video, I have previously ran my process. Let's deep dive into analytics of it. In actions runs columns we can see that 5222 actions ran. Why? Let's click on it and see. Well, the process flow contains get file data for each and stop. The start and stop actions are not counted. But all actions within the for each action were processed each time for each line of the file. Remember we mentioned in the beginning that we have a list of roughly 1,300 users. Let's take a look at these numbers at instances level. You will notice that the duration of process, which is calculated as last update minus start date, is about 19 minutes roughly. However, the execution time that actually decreases from your plan usage is only 952 minutes. In this view, you can see the numbers that matter at instance level all instances belonging to a process. If you need more, you can go to analytics. Here is how. Here you can see the numbers summed up in totals at process level. And from here, you can drill down into details at instance level and action level execution time. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, there can be multiple reasons why a process can have duration time longer than actual execution time. For example, a delay action within a process can influence the long duration of a process, but not the actual execution time of a process. For example, you want to send two email to your customers in a two days sequence. The duration of the process will be two days, from the start to stop, but actual execution time will only be the count of the actions running to prepare the data and send the emails. Hey Rob, you mentioned earlier that external factors can influence the execution time of an action. Can you please detail more on that? Sure, thanks for reminding me. So, indeed, besides the execution time that Processio takes on running the in-platform actions, other external factors may intervene. These may usually appear to the call API actions, as call API, in general waits for a third-party service to answer a request, therefore is dependent on the third-party service provider's performance. Similarly, SMTP or SFTP connections, that requests or sends data and it again waits to request or receive data. Also, if the SFTP server is slow, obviously the data transfer itself will be time consuming. This was a video about what execution time is. If you need more details, you may access our documentation. Happy automation with Processio!